Hey, uh, welcome to, um, Skin Cold. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah Skyrim. So, what's up? Uh, yeah, Rage Raven here, and uh, welcome back to Skyrim, I guess. So, anyways, um, yeah, so today's, uh, drink, you know, because every morning we do that, like, thing that where we, like, drink something, like, really cool. Sometimes it's energy drink, most of the time it's coffee, and, uh, yeah, today's no different. So, um, yeah, let me just take a sip of my drink. Oh, hey, Draken. Oh, yeah. oh, what's up, brother? Welcome to Skyrim Media, where we're gonna kick some dragon ass. I, I'm sorry, I don't know why the fuck I'm so hyped this weekend, dude. <laughs> oh, man, shit. You should be, like, hearing, like, the voice I made for the blight. Uh, you know, I, I mean, he has, like, a Dr. Uh, Jekyll and Mr. Hyde kind of thing. And, um... Like, you know, in his lore and stuff like that, so I, 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 I usually do that kind of voice, so. Alright, well, anyway, since we're already here, let's go ahead and kick this dragon's ass, why not? Um, oh, dragon, I know you're minding your own business, but I'm here to <gasps> kick your ass. Did I hit you? No, I didn't. I completely missed. Oh, uh, hey, oh shit, there's a fucking bear. Okay, what the, okay, okay, there's so many things going on right now my, for my little head to, uh, to, do stuff with. <laughs> Kids, if there's anything you should do on a Sunday morning, it's like go at a bear with a knife. Alright. So now, while my guys fight heroically and impresses, you know, no one, I'm gonna hide my Oh my god! <laughs> Oh, okay, am I tripping or did, like was there a bear that fucking died and then there's that was another bear? Oh my god, I don't even know. All right, all right. Well, fuck that. I got my uh, heart rate going for the day. Uh, let's uh, yeah, let's uh, head back. So yesterday in uh, episode, we um went to Dustman's Karen and I uh, found out that uh, our boy Farkas is a uh, furry. So uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty cool. And a bunch of furries are in the. Uh, Now, first of all, I don't have any f beef with the furry community. Secondly, though, you guys seriously much of uh, sexual deviants because pretty much that's what a lot of people just think that furries are. Now, I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a, there has to be a big group of like people in the furry community that just like dressing up as animals and just like going to conventions and stuff like that. There's no way, why the fuck is Skyrim so freezy today? There's no way that I believe that like, you know, 100% of the community just wants to bang animals? Yeah, yeah isn't that, wait, so isn't this technically some form of bestiality? Uh, whatever. Okay, you know, I'm just gonna stop talking about furries now. Uh, anyways, uh, who the fuck would talk about talking about furries and, uh, Skyrim? Oh, yeah, Kaji lovers, of course. <coughs> so, anyways, um, yeah, so, uh, I've been playing a whole lot of Blight yesterday, and I mean a whole lot, and oh my god, have I gotten a lot better, uh, with them. So, if you saw my Blight game yesterday, base, or if you don't know what I'm talking about, first of all, I'm talking about Dead by Daylight, uh, which is uh, an asymmetrical horror game. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, dude, DVD, I mean, it's just one of those games where you just keep coming back to, you know? Um, it's, it's a pretty damn fun game. Uh, but somehow they managed to uh, make some of the killers feel really satisfying to play. Um, and Blight, he's definitely one of those killers. He's definitely one of the toughest killers to, uh, I've ever played in the game. But, um, dude, the fucking music's still hot. Alright, I'm actually gonna go ahead and do yes. me a favor real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and restart the game. Uh, so let me go ahead and quick save. I'm gonna restart the game, see if they'll fix that, uh, Thing that keep freezing the game for some reason, so uh, BRB. Okay, we're back. All right, so hopefully that'll uh, yes. thing. but anyways, uh, but yeah, do you hunt? Light up the planes outside White Run or right just fucking happen again. God damn it. Right, I don't know what's huh? going on with the uh, thing, so hopefully it'll fix itself somehow. But um, but yeah, Blight, he's just so satisfying to play, uh, especially not learning how hard he is to actually learn. We've been awaiting your return. Uh, why? Come, follow me. 
<sighs> All right. Oh damn! That guys here. All right, hey guys. What's up, brothers and sisters of the circle? Today we welcome a new soul to our mortal fold. This man has endured, has challenged, and has shown his valor. Who will speak for him? I stand witness to the courage of the soul before us. Would you raise your shield in his defense? I would stand at his back, that the world might never overtake us. And would you raise your sword in his honor? It stands ready to meet the blood of his foes. And would you raise a mug in his name? I would lead the Song of Triumph as our Mead Hall reveled in his stories. Then the judgment of this circle is complete. His heart beats with fury and courage that have united <laughs> the companions since the days of... I thought you were going to say furry. Oh! Let it beat with ours that the mountains may echo and our enemies may tremble at the call. It, it shall be so. so. Come well, boy, questions. you're one of us. I know our history. I trust you won't disappoint. By now. Except I can remember it. So you guys are werewolves, huh? I see you've been allowed to know some secrets before your appointed time. No matter. Yes, it's true. Not every companion, though. Only members of the circle all share the blood of the beast. Some take to it more than others. What about you? Well, I grow old. My mind turns towards the horizon, to Sovngarde. I worry that Shore won't call an animal to glory as he would a true Nord warrior. Living as beasts draws our souls closer to the Daedric Lord Hircine. Some may prefer an eternity in his hunting grounds, but I crave the fellowship of Sovngarde. So you're looking to cure yourself? Yes, but it's no easy matter. But you don't need to share the worries of an old warrior. This day is to rejoice in your bravery. And speak to Yorland if you want a better weapon than whatever that is. Aye! I don't even have weapons. So. Alright. <clears throat> Gonna talk to our boy Yorland. Got a lot of steel to shape. Hey, do you have a weapon for me? Yes, lad. You've been raised into the companions, I hear. I can fashion whatever kind of weapon you want. Finest forge in Skyrim, right here before you. Alright, um... Let's go for a dagger. Why not? Ah, the sneaky type, eh? I think we can fix you right up. Die for a steel dagger. <sighs> Excuse me. Um... Uh, it just looks like, you know what? I got an idea for mm. you. Uh, Gods be praised. Let me go ahead and give you a bunch of the shit that I do not need. Uh, so you can take this glass dagger. You can take that dagger back. You take that. Uh, and then what? Oh shit, yeah, all this stuff. Yeah. As much as I technically I want this on to do more damage with the bow, I must prefer to have the current headpiece I have on now, which allows me to have uh, two standing stones on. So yeah, and there's no way in hell I'm giving this away. Not this is very good. Um, yeah, you can have that. Do I not have to wait? Do I not have that on? Mm-hmm. Okay, I do. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know what, injured? Still here. Yeah. What do you want me to carry? Why don't you have the thief backpack? There you go. You lead, I'll yeah, follow. Yeah, now you look kind of cool. Only kind of though, because you know, cool is just for me. All right. Uh, let's go ahead real quick and go on to Ripton. I want to go ahead and sell all the jewelry I have. Alright. I know exactly who they gotta get to. What's up, Bam? 
Greetings, bam, bam. honored friend. Could I interest you in some fine jewelry? Do you make your own jewelry? I do. Sadly, I'm one of the few traditional Saxlil jewelers that remains in Tamriel. It's becoming a lost art. Only trouble is gathering materials has become hazardous. The roads to the mines and to the other cities are thick with bandits, and worse. Would you be interested in gathering some materials for me? I'd certainly be happy to compensate you. You know what? You're all right. You're all right. I, you know, yeah, yeah, I get them for you. Why not? Thank you, Land Strider. It only cost I'm me a couple heads. A small list of items to complete my next. How do you mean, like the head on top of the shoulder? Two flawless no, not sapphires, yeah. a mammoth tusk, and a chunk of gold ore. Well, I do got your flawless sapphires already. Good. These will make wonderful settings for my rings. Um, hang on a second. Travel, is there, is there Hello? What's going on? Oh. Uh. Oh, it's just the uh, Imperial versus the Stormcloaks again. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, get this out then. Ah. What are you doing? Sir, we're gonna have to ask you to, uh, well, I mean, you might be on my side, but then at the same time you are in the minority here. Sorry. Alright. Anyways. Sorry, brother. I'm, I'm back. I'm back. So, uh, anyways, so how's business going? Not well, I'm afraid. That Brynjolf? He keeps draining the people's pockets with uh, his yeah, that, that, miracle that cures. That motherfucker brand new, A few right? months ago, <laughs> it was Troll Fat Sav, and now he's got something new. Not that there's anything that can be done about it. He's in good with the Thieves' Guild. Oh yeah, the Thieves' Guild. What a bunch of assholes, right? <laughs> um, anyways, uh... Just what you see here. Alright. I got a bunch of stuff that I need to sell to you, man. Uh, so you can have that, you can have that, you can have that. You can have that too. Um, what, wait, what amulet do I have on now? Oh yeah, I have that. <laughs> Alright. Um, uh, you know what, you're my boy. Oh, so you have that. What do you have that I can take right now, though? Hmm, you know what? You know what? Get, get something for the old wife, why not? Uh, all right. Safe travel. How much money do I got? Oh shit! I actually definitely Strider. have enough money to get the uh, house in uh, solitude. All meets guaranteed. Working at the Rift and Fisher right. is tough. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and go back there in a couple of days, if I remember, anyways, and we'll uh, we'll uh sell some more of my jewelry because I have a lot of them. So, but first, when this works. Let's actually go ahead and see the old wife, see if I can actually give her something. Goo me. Goo me. Hey, kids. What's up? Alright. What's up? What do you need, my thing? Uh. Lead the way. I guess you can do that. I've got your back. And then I can say I got something for you. How can I serve you, my thing? And then I'll give you this Nordic cool thingy because you know Nordic stuff is your kind of thing. Cause yeah. Uh, boom. All right. I'll head back home if you need me. Oh, we have a cozy little profit here. This is your share, love. Um, yeah, that's about Goodbye, it. my love. Actually, you know, while we're here, let's go ahead and put some of our uh, books up as well. You might as well because I mean, we're really, I mean, it's just uh, taking up uh, uh, inventory weight uh, in here. I 
actually, hold up. I actually want to see that. There's a book about the weapon jack. Alright. Alright, that's not bad. Alright, let's go ahead and take a read, kids. <clears throat> Wab attack. Don't even know who wrote it. Little boys shouldn't summon up the forces of eternal darkness unless they have an adult supervising. I know, I know. But on that sunny night, on the fifth of first seed, I didn't want an adult. I wanted Hermaeus Mora, the Daedric of, of knowledge, learning, gums, and varnishes. Gums? Uh, you see, I was told by a beautiful large breast large-breasted man who lived under the library in my hometown on the fifth of first seed was Himaeus Morris Knight. And if I wanted the Ogma Infinium, the book of knowledge, I had to summon him. When you're the new king of solitude, every bit of knowledge helps. Normally I need normally you need a witch's coven or a mage's guild or at least something or at least matching pillowcase and she's Timbo, a prince of oblivion. The man under the library showed me how to do it myself, who told me to wait until the storm was at its height before shaving the cat. I've forgotten the rest of the ceremony. It doesn't matter. Someone appeared who I thought was Himaeus Mora. The only thing that made me somewhat suspicious was Himaeus Mora from what I read was a big blobby multi-eyed multi-claw-eyed claw monstrosity and this guy looked like a waistcoated banker also he kept calling himself Shiogorath not Hermes Morath or Hermes Mora. still I was so happy to have successfully summoned Hermes Mora these inconsistencies did not bother me he had me do something that didn't make any sense to me beyond the mortal scope, bread, and kin, I suppose. And then, his servant happily gave me something called the Wabajack, 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 Wabajack. Maybe the Wabajack is the book of knowledge. Maybe I'm smarter because I know cats can be bats, can be rats, can be hats, can be gnats, and that's can be a, a, a is that thesis? Thesis? Whatever. And the doors can be boars, can be snores, can be floors, can be wars, can be spores, can be yours, and can be mine. Damn! Yo, whoever made this can be a modern day rapper. Uh, I must be smart for the interconnective system is very clear to me. Then why, or oh, wherefore do people keep calling me mad? Wabajack, wabajack, wabajack. Alright. So obviously, that guy was thinking he was trying to summon Hermes Mora, um, but instead was talking to Shiagorath, the prince of uh, insanity and all that shit. So, yeah, shit got crazy. So, I've heard you may actually be stronger than you look. Perhaps we can hunt together someday. I'm looking for work. The Jarl of the Rift has asked for our help. Okay. It seems that predators have taken up residence and have been attacking farmers and travelers. Someone's got to head out there and take care of the beasts. Oh, well, that'll be me. Good. I knew that we could count on you. It's simply a beast, but be cautious. The beasts of Skyrim are made of sterner stuff than most. Alright. I think I feel like actually walking to the next place here. So why not? Uh, clear out Pine Peak Cavern. Alright, where is that going to be? Eh, it's not too far, it's just around the mountain. Here we come around the mountain, here we come. Here we come around the mountain, here we come. So the dragonborn is coming around the mountain when he comes. Come to me with questions. Because he's gonna yell at your wife. As well as to, now. I don't know, something that rhymes with comes. Wow. <laughs> I have no idea what I was trying to say there. Alright. <clears throat> Alrighty. Yeah, maybe we should visit the Greatbeard at some point. It's been like, what, like maybe half a year? Wait. Holy shit, guys. You know what I just realized? Holy shit. I just realized that it's been about an entire year since we started Skyrim. Wow, that's crazy, man. 
an entire year since we visited the grave. Well, not, I mean, technically not an entire year yet, but close enough. Damn. Happy one year anniversaries, bad people. I mean, for anyone who's uh, stuck with us through all fucking 81 videos, holy crap and balls. That is a lot and that's some dedication. But hey, man. It doesn't surprise me that we're still playing this game. There's still stories to unfold uh, and to uncover, you know, in Skyrim. I mean, that's what makes this game so legendary, man. It's the, just, just so much content. Yet somehow, Skyrim does not feel overwhelming. I don't, I don't know what it is, but uh, when it comes to like Ubisoft games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, um, like for some reason that shit just feels so overwhelming. Oh, man. The only reason why I miss is because I was kind of distracted. Again, the only reason why I kind of miss is because I was kind of distracted. Anyways. Like, like, Ubisoft games, man, I don't know about you, but, like, they really, like, feel overwhelming. Hello there, fellow traveler. One itinerant minstrel and wandering wastrel at your service. Can you, what are you doing out here? Some may find their inspiration tucked away in tomes, or by carousing in the cities. But I find it here, in the vast expanses of Skyrim. Can you teach me about spacecraft? Ah, well, after a little incident with a roguish lad and uh, the daughter of a prominent thane, well, let's just say, best not. Afraid not. But if you're serious about sharpening that tongue, you might try the Bard's College in solitude. Uh, we've been talking about this for a whole year. But can I make a request? For a generous fellow traveler. But of course, what would you like to hear? Uh, how about the Dragonborn comes? Ysmir's <laughs> blessing on you. This one's a favorite of mine. A legend we all know and love. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, listen hero, up, people. Our hero claims a warrior's heart. I tell you, I tell you, the Dragonborn comes. Damn. With a voice-wielding power of the ancient Nord art. Believe, believe, the Dragonborn comes. It's an end to the evil of all Skyrim's foes. Beware, beware, the Dragonborn comes. For the darkness has passed and the legend yet grows. You'll know, you'll know, the Dragonborn's come. Bro, that was the hottest song I've ever heard, man. I'll see you when you get your own concert going one day. Woo, what you guys think, huh? Huh? That was, that was, yo, whoever the Dragonborn guy is, man, he must be awesome, right? I'm right behind you. Sure. How about you, Zarga? You haven't spoken in a while. You are taking us somewhere warm, I trust. Bro, it's Skyrim. <laughs> is there anywhere warm? Alright. <clears throat> but as I was saying though, um, yeah, when it comes to like other open world games and stuff like that, man, uh, the time update can just feel so overwhelming because there's so much to do. But with Skyrim, I think, I don't know what they do. I think it just comes out at a mellow pace, you know? Like the world is big enough. Not saying that Ubisoft worlds aren't big. But, um,. Yeah, I just don't know what it is, man. There has to be, I, I, you know what? If there is a YouTuber out there, can you please tell me why, and you like Skyrim, can you please tell me why Skyrim just feels so much more chillaxed to play? You know, it, it just doesn't feel as overwhelming Where'd to play than, than, uh, you know, than other games. Or is there somebody in the comments that can, you know, express, <coughs> you know, <coughs> fucking up. Or maybe like, there's someone uh, in the comments, this is the first I'm, ask, I'm ever asking anyone to, you know, comment down in the video. Um, that, you know, why is, why does it feel so good to play Skyrim without <clears throat> feeling like I need to go out and do this, I need to go out and do that to where it feels so overwhelming, you know? Um, I wish I could put it. I, I wish I could put it in better words, but really, that's just that's the best I got, you know. So, 
I mean, maybe like, maybe I played Skyrim when it came out, so everyone was discovering stuff at the same time. Um, so it wasn't like, you know, like if somebody dropped into Skyrim now, right? And they, uh, and they saw all the things you can do and all these things you can be. Maybe that way I can understand how it can be overwhelming, but <clears throat> I don't know with me though. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. So maybe I should like, uh, look for it in a different perspective. Okay, I'm too interested to see what's in this cave that the dragon, that these giants are, uh, protecting. So, you know, Mind. I'm just gonna assassinate the giants for no reason. You know what? While well, you guys do that, I'm gonna go ahead and increase our illusion spells. And Jard, if you went up to me in real life and told me that, I'd, I'd probably believe you. To be honest. You're a tough bitch. I do not. Gag, I know for a fact you can beat a giant's ass. Alright. <laughs> to be fair, I don't see any like human skeleton remains or anything like that, so these guys so far in my case have been kinda innocent. Oh, there you go, there's skeleton. Alright. Now I don't feel as bad. <clears throat> Whoa. The giants are really thinking about living in caves, huh? Are they serious about fucking making a campfire inside of a cave? And there's nothing wrong with making a campfire inside the cave, okay? Let me repeat that. Are they serious about making a bonfire inside the cave? Because they're just going to be smoking themselves out, man. <clears throat> What's this? The Knights of the Nine. <gasps> This is one of the DLCs in Elder Scrolls 4. I never found this before. I have to look at this. Okay, I'm sorry. I have to read it. Cause to be honest though, I never really played a lot of Oblivion. Um, so I'm actually kind of curious to see like what this is. How about the Knights of the Nine? <clears throat> Here we go. The Knights of the Nine by Caroline of Solitude. Few people now, now remember the Knights of the Nine, but in their time, they were famous throughout Cyrodiil, indeed throughout the Empire. For a brief period in the early days of Septim Empire, their adventures were the talk of the land, but their renown, as with so much else, was swallowed up by the War of the Red Diamond. And today, even the location of their priory house has been lost to history. The Knights were founded by Sir Emil Lannis in Third Era 111. Following his, I know that's 111, but you know I'm reading. Uh, following his heroic turn in the War of the Isles, with the high purpose of recovering the legendary Crusader's relic, the weapons and armor of Pelennial White Strike, which have been lost for thousands of years, they were born out of these senses of optimism and ambition that characterized the first century of the Third Era. Tamriel was united at and at peace for the first time in many centuries. Nothing was impossible. The fame of the knights was established early on when Sir Emil led them against the worm of Elinglen okay, uh, to recover the caress of the crusader, which had not been seen since the first era. Soon, the greatest knights of the day were lining up to join the new order, and the priory of the nine in the west wield of Cyrodiil became a magnet for the great and the good. The knights were the toast of the empire. When Burrich Vlidril uh, joined the order, the scion of one of the great noble families of Colovia, it was clear that the knights of the nine had become the empire's most prestigious knightly order. 
In relatively short order, the knights reclaimed three more relics, and their fame soared to new heights with each one. No one doubted that they would eventually succeed in their quest to recover all eight relics. Sadly, this early promise of the knights did not survive the ravages of the War of the Red Diamond, which tore apart the Empire beginning in 3rd era 121. At first, it seemed that Sir Amiel was able to keep his knights out of the war, but the very success of this knights undermined this. As many of the knights came from important families from across the Empire which were lining up on either side of the bloody civil war, Sir Burich was apparently the first to leave the order to join the war on the side of Sephoris, carrying the sword and greaves of the crusader into battle with him. Many other knights seemed to have left the order shortly after this, some joining the war on one side or the other. The end of the order was an ignominious, that's a new word, uh, as its beginning was glorious. Following the victory of Sephora's in 3rd era 127, Philandrill became an important figure on the winning side. It seemed likely that he was behind the imperial decree which officially dissolved the knights of the nine in 3rd era 131. Although, in truth, this was a little more than a formality, despite Samuel's best effort, the order had never recovered from the bitterness of the Civil War. What happened to the various relics originally recovered by the Knights of the Nine? The sword and the greaves went with Sir Beard, which were he, but he, where he bestowed them is unknown. The gauntlets, okay, first of all, before we go on, I bet these relics or what you have to go out and collect in the Elder Scrolls War in the Knights and the Nine. So you had to go out and collect the relics and the sword and the grief went with Sir Beard. So I guess you had to look for the sword and the greaves or something? I don't know. But either way, I think for anyone who's played the original DLC, uh, the Knights of the Nine and uh, Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, <coughs> let me say that again, Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Sorry, I got my sinuses acting up again. I think this is a really cool fucking story, and you guys understand way more than what I'm getting out of this. But, um, hey, you know what? Maybe one day we'll go to Oblivion. Maybe. One day. But, uh, for now, though, uh, let's stick with Skyrim. Just, um, shit, man. This is a big game. The gauntlets famously lie immovable on the floor of the Chapel of Slendar in Churl where Sir Casimir left them after his disgraceful murder of the beggar in the era 139. The location of the Kuros is a mystery, lost to history, along with the eventual fate of Sir Amiel, who was last reported still living alone in the empty priory of the Nine by a passing traveler in the era 150, and so the Knights of the Nine faded away into history. Damn. You know what? That's kind of sad, like, for anyone who, like, went through that DLC and probably, like, like enjoyed the Knights of the Nine, to see that they're now just nothing, you know? They just faded away. Can you imagine that in the next Elder Scrolls game, we're going to be reading on something that we've been through here in this video game, in, the, in Skyrim, right? So we're going to be reading, you know, what happens to the Companions, or what happens to the Dragonborn after, you know, all this shit happened, right? And it's either, and it's more than likely just gonna have a vague ending. Like we really don't know what happened to any of anything that that we're going through right now. We just know that um, we just know that they're still out there somewhere, maybe, or just been devoured by uh, whatever. Um, it's one cool thing though, and I won't spoil how the ending of the Dragonborn story is, right? Because there is actually. Uh, a couple theories of what happens to the Dragonborn, our character, um, at the end of, you know, Skyrim, I guess, or at the end of one of the main quests that we do. Um, but I won't spoil it until we get to it, but it is rather mysterious, you know? Um, so, in Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind, right, the, uh, I, I honestly, I, I, I don't keep in check with my lore when it comes to Morrowind or Oblivion. But what I do know is that the champion of whatever whatever, which is the which is basically your character in Morrowind, 
is still alive. He's still like out there chilling out because at the end, um, I guess you're granted either eternal life or to live long uh, in Morrowind and stuff like that after you defeat whoever, whoever. And um, yeah, so your Elder Scrolls 3 character is still alive as far as I know. And Elder Scrolls 4, <coughs> uh, your character becomes Sher Gorath. Um, uh, after the Shivering Isles DLC. So, if you guys remember how we got, uh, how we went to a dead person's mind after a while, um, the Daedric God of Madness, Sheragorath, he's, uh, again, he's your character from Elder Scrolls 4. Now, you might be wondering, well, how the fuck can he be my character if I was like an orc or Khajiit? Well, there's this thing that they called, uh, short. Goratharism, or I don't know, I can't remember what they call it, but basically, as you become a Daedric God, you will slowly morph into what Sheragorath looks like, and eventually you'll end up, you know, looking like Sheragorath, sounding like Sheragorath, sp speaking like Sheragorath, you know, um, and yeah, and now in the Elder Scrolls V, Dragonborn, all I say is that it's pretty much a mystery at this point, and um, I guess that's technically, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what it is until, uh, you, um, you know, play Elder, uh, Elder Scroll 6, uh, in about 30 years when the game finally releases. So, by the way, is anybody, like, really into, uh, Star Citizen or crap, whatever the fuck, that next Bethesda game coming out? So, honestly, like... I have no personal, like, needs to play it right now, but I'm definitely, like, check it out if it comes out like that, because I think it's supposed to be. You know, it's so funny how we're talking about, like, <coughs> it's so funny how we were talking about, like, oh, what happened to your characters and all that stuff, like, at the end of these games, and here we are, to uh, and here's the cultist of the, uh, of the character, of the bad dude that influences the Dragonborn at the very end, uh, that's, that's so interesting, uh, anyways. Woo! Oh my God, this game looks so pretty. Like I said, man, I'm 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 kind of worried. I don't know if anybody. Uh, I, I I can imagine that most people who grew up with Morrowind, the same way I did with Skyrim, probably think Morrowind is the best game. And same thing with Oblivion. But when it comes to like Elder Scrolls Six, I feel like I'm just gonna enjoy Skyrim a lot more than El Elder Scrolls Six. You know, I'm gonna fall into that category with a, uh, with a lot of the same people with the games that they've grown up with. Because <clears throat> I just don't know how the fuck they're going to top this. I really don't. Okay, I didn't know if you, if you had like a quick... Holy shit, look how fast you did. Uh, this, you don't get mercy when you attack first. Done and done. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's see. Alright, we should be heading upwards very soon. So, yeah, we'll go up there. And I had an upwards, so. Ah, uh, this guy looks pretty. This kind of reminds me of, uh, God of War. Uh, in the. Uh, world when you look up in the sky and like you can still see the stars when it's, the sun is out sun. the hell hey did I see you back by white run <sighs> smell that fresh air Truly, this is a good place to play a song. 
whatever. Alright. <clears throat> what are the chances of that running to the same NPC, tw NPC twice in one travel? <clears throat> but, um, anyways. Yeah, just to talk of, like, Auto School 6 and stuff like that. I'm excited for it. I'll, I'll, I know I'll enjoy the hell out of it, because... Uh, I know some people, like, they can't really get into the, the lore of, of the Elder Scrolls. Fortunately, I can. I fucking love the lore of the Elder Scrolls and the world and stuff like that. But, I, don't, I just don't know how modern day Bethesda can actually make something as good as, you know, as Skyrim. Because, um, <clears throat> I mean, I think most of us can agree that Fallout 4 wasn't as good as Fallout 3 or New Vegas. And again, I don't know if this because that's just something you grow up on, and you know you're pretty. Uh, I, I I don't I don't know the word for uh, for that. Like when you're when you grow up on something, it's kind of like music, right? The music you grow up with, you're gonna think that's way more superior than the music that comes out nowadays. But in like 40 years or something like that, the people that enjoy that grew up with the music that comes out nowadays. It's gonna think it's more superior than the music that's gonna be, you know, coming out in the future. Where'd you come from? So, so yeah, you know, it's just, it's just something that happens. Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me, really, guys? After all that. Alright, but anyways, but yeah, so it's just, I don't know, man, it's just, uh, it's, it's a wait and see kind of thing, so, but even then, I'm gonna have to, uh, start purchasing some, uh, equipment to record on X-Bone, so, which I've been thinking about doing, um, so a little spoiler for the future is that I really want to go through the God of War series, like the original God of War series, uh, but you can only stream them on PlayStation, so, um, I think, Need you know, something? I'm gonna do that, and, uh, yeah, you know, it'll be our first, uh, you know, series where we can, where we don't have to play, you know, an official PS4, PS5 game, you know, and it, it'll be so crazy too, because that means that God of War has not only inspired me to play, uh, you know, to start doing less plays, but it'll also inspire me to start, you know, mixing up a bit, get the, uh, you know, start, you know, playing some PC. Don't encourage me to buy those tomorrow. Uh, Uh, so, yeah, I think we got to speak about a lot of good stuff uh, along the way. So this is the that's the thing about Skyrim, man. Is I can I can do that. Like I can play Skyrim, and not every episode I can do this, but most of the time I can just figure something to speak about. You know, just have a chat about it. Um, because there's just so much to talk about when it comes to fucking Skyrim, man. So much to talk about. But uh, yeah. I've heard you may need something. I've cleared out the beast layer. Good to hear. Have your share of the pay. Uh, can you me be better at archery? I'll show you what I know. There we go. I'm looking for work. Still eager to please. This is good. Skewer might be right about you. 
He has something special planned for you. Better talk to him. Okay. Some nights I dream about the mists of Sovngarde. Uh, hey. Ah, there you are. You want to see me? Yes. I have something a little different planned this time. But it's not for everyone to hear. Meet me in the Underforge tonight. We will speak more. Ah, yes, the Underforge. Uh, where's that? I forget that you've never seen it. Beneath the Skyforge, where Yorland works. The door is hidden, but I will show you the way. Okay. Mm-hmm. I just gotta skip an hour. Come to me with what? What brings you to me? Find some strange creature in your travels? Alright. Uh can't get some candlelight going. <clears throat> this must be that beautiful Skyrim weather I've always heard about. Are you prepared? For here's all you need to know. Your Vesker is the oldest building in White Rock. Skyforge was here long before it was. And the Underforge taps an ancient magic that is older than men or elves. We bring you here to make you stronger, New Blood. Now let's move. Okay. All right, you go first. I'm glad you came. It's been a long time since we had a heart like yours among our numbers. That pitiful ceremony behind the hall does not befit warriors like us. You are due more honor than some calls and feasting. I would hope you recognize Ayla, even in this form. Not at all. She's agreed to be your forebear. We do this in secret because Codlack is too busy trying to throw away this great gift we've been granted. He thinks we've been cursed, but we've been blessed. How can something that gives this kind of prowess be a curse? So we take matters into our own hands. To reach the heights of the Companions, you must join with us in the shared blood of the Wolf. Are you prepared to join your spirit with the Beast World, friend? Hell yeah! Very well. Alright, you guys ready to, to see the sickest uh, blood effect ever? Alright, ready to watch this. Ready, ready, ready. Yeah! That was cool. Yum, 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 yum. And now... We have finally become Werewolf! Oh uh, yeah. Alright. I don't actually like going in town and killing NPCs because I like to have it feel more populated while I'm going through it on a leisure day. So we'll actually go into playing as a werewolf in the next episode, so yours was not an easy transformation, but you're still alive, so congratulations. We even have a celebration planned for you. There's a pack of werewolf hunters camped nearby at Gallows Rock. The Silver Hand. I think you've met them before. We're going to slaughter them. All of them. Lead on. Skior's already scouting ahead. This is like something that uh, we're doing behind someone's back. So. But what just happened? You were born into the pack, brother. I almost envy you. Oh. Sorry. First time is always so I'm a little jealous that I became a werewolf and not a vampire, huh? You That's gave right. us even more That's trouble right. than Farkas did at his first turn. Can you not burn my face with your uh, torch, please? Am I a werewolf now? You have the blood of the wolf in you. You'll need to build up your strength before you can call on it again, though. Just be careful where you do it. Some cowards in this land can't stand the sight of glory before them. So some cowards can't stand the sight of fires three inches from their face, but, you know, I guess I'm not one of those. Uh, what does it mean to be a werewolf? Nothing until you choose to use it. Cool. Then, well, you got a taste. Stronger, faster. It doesn't last long, though. The blood of your foes can sustain you, if you're willing to feed. The more we feed, the greater our prowess will grow. We could perhaps discover even more gifts of her scene. Is there a cure? Cure? Ha! You're sounding like the old man. I... I shouldn't say that. I love Codlac. I respect and follow him. But he's wrong on this. It's no curse. 
We're made into the greatest hunters in the land. If he's worried about some mead-swilling afterlife and Sovngarde, he's free to pursue it. I'll take the glories of the hunt right here. So where are we going? The Silver Hand have taken over the old fort at Gallows Rock. They always make such easy prey. Alright. That's certainly unusual. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, I, I, I talk to myself a lot because, uh, well, you know, there's a audience in my head that I kind of talk to as I'm playing, as I'm living the life, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, you're gonna be a little weirded out, but, uh, give me a few minutes, alright? Alrighty, well, there you go, so now we are officially a werewolf and into the inner circle. She's looking at me really weird, I'm just gonna have to look at my homies here who are more used to it. So, anyways, uh, so, yeah, there you go, we're a werewolf now. Yay. Next weekend we'll uh we'll go into beast form and start fucking some shit up. So anyways, as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Later. She's still looking at me funny.